Moon High, I am Brie Witt, and thank you for joining me for this week's new show. With all the latest in news, sports, and entertainment. You're watching the Boone TV Buzz, Iowa High School's most watched high school news show. Where I will bring you all the latest news, sports, and entertainment at Boone High School. Let's first take a look at what has Boone High School buzzing. First off, Boone TV's Holden Davis with the high school's winter formal recap. Every year before the Boone winter formal, the high school has an assembly to celebrate the event. The assembly is a fun way to spread school spirit during the middle of the school year. One popular tradition from the winter formal assembly is the crowning of the winter formal king and queen. There is a school-wide vote that determines the two winners. This year, the winners for King and Queen were Roman Drosky and Gracie Gustafson. Roman and Gracie felt happy and honored to be voted by their classmates. Um, I am happy that my peers voted for me, and yeah. Um, honestly, I feel very good about it. I didn't realize how many people actually like liked and respected me um, enough to vote me onto there. Yeah. Along with the Winter Formal King and Queen coronation, the assembly also had games where students participated to be included in the event. One of the games that was played was basketball tic-tac-toe. Another game involved everyone in attendance, where the audience was told different facts about the winter formal court. Then they had to guess who the fact belonged to. Students who participated in different winter sports and activities were also recognized during the assembly. Different teams and activities went down to the gym floor and were given the mic to talk about their seasons and promote future games or meets. We are going, we're going to the Bird Middle School Beach. We're having a basketball game at tonight at 4.30. We gotta win! We gotta win! The Boone High School Band provided entertainment during the assembly. The band played different songs during the event. One standout moment was a solo by senior Brenner Walsh. Brenner utilized time outside of class to prepare for his solo. I would go in during wind time for like every single day and practice until it didn't squeak or sound bad. The Winter Formal Assembly was a fun event to celebrate students, their accomplishments, and the winter dance that followed. The assembly recognized students, held games, provided entertainment, and was a fresh breath of air during the middle of the school year. Thank you for watching. This has been Junior Holden Davis with Boone TV. Boone TV's Ember Novi features the high school's pep band in the performance during the Winter Formal Assembly. How's it going, Boone High? My name is Ember Novi, and today I'm back with another feature, this time focusing on the basketball pep band. The season may be coming to a close, but don't worry. Boone High has a pep band for the basketball games every year. The band plays all manner of songs from Cheers to TV tunes, and even the well-known classics like The Fight Song and Runaway Baby. Cameron Skiles is a tuba player in the regular band and takes up the sousaphone in pep band to provide those low notes that we all love. So my favorite part about pep band would have to be going to the concession stand and getting the cheddar filled pretzel every time. The director of the pep band, Mr. Truckenmiller, is a very enthusiastic director enjoying pretty much every aspect of his job as director of the high school bands. Uh, what I like about pep band is it's a lighter version of marching band in that we get to play fun pop music, current tunes, anything that I like, uh, but we don't have to spend the time learning formations to it on the field, we just get to focus on the music. The final day that Boone High Pet Band is performing this season will be February 9th, 2024, which is Pack the Gym Night as Boone faces off against North Polk. Come and show your support of the Boone girls and boys basketball teams and encourage them to come out of the last home basketball game with a win. Thanks for joining me for this feature on the pet band, and I'll see you at the games. Roll doors.
like jazz. You like jazz? Boom TV's McKay Eggett features the Boone High School's jazz band. Every year at Boone High, Mr. Truckenmiller starts the Flats in the Morning Jazz Band. This band wakes up early for practice, and many of the students have been doing jazz band for a few years. did it in like 6th or 7th grade in the middle school, and I loved how unorganized it was. Middle school was like only 7th and 8th graders could do jazz band, and I would go in in the mornings, and I would listen to them because they sounded so cool. And I, and I wanted to do that, and I just stayed with it. And it's gotten so much more fun the longer I've been in it. Both the students and the teachers are excited about the jazz band. Performing my solo song at contest. I'm feeling pretty confident about it. It's going pretty well so far. Uh, I'm feeling good about jazz band. Uh, I have my up days and my down days, but um, I think we're on an up upward trajectory here. We look forward to hearing the jazz band perform at their Jazz for All Ages concert in February. I'm McKaggett for Boone TV. As always, roll doors. To recognize our students, Boone TV Strummer Grout features freshman Sam Chestnut. Every year we get new faces around the school. Sam Chestnut is a freshman and enjoys his time here. I would say my goals for this year are just to get better as a person and help everyone else around me get better. Sam is a four-sport athlete in cross-country, basketball, and baseball, as, and as well as tennis. Many of his peers enjoy playing sports with him. So Sam Chestnut uh, is a great guy on the basketball court and off. You know, he's a great leader. Um, he does what he has to do to be the best he can be, so uh, he has a lot of grit. I like that. On the basketball court, I mean, he's a dog. Everything he does, he's, he's so good at it. I mean, that little floater shot he's got, you can't stop it. You can't stop it. I mean, he's the toughest on the team. I would say it can be challenging sometimes as an athlete just to handle with schoolwork and miss it, miss it most of the day, but it's pretty nice. Not only is Sam an exceptional athlete, he is also great in the classroom, according to his teachers. Having Sam in class is a very positive experience. Um, he definitely takes on a leadership role in class. We do a lot of group work, and Sam's always willing to help his uh, table partners um, or kind of take the lead and go up to the board and answer the questions when we're asking for his participation. Sam is looking forward to to having a great finish to his first year of high school. This has been Strummer Grout from Boone TV, and as always, Roll Doors. Next up on February 19th, the boys basketball team took on Ballard. Sports reporter Camden Lehman has your recap. I'm Cam Lehman here for the Boone boys basketball. The Toradors come into this one 3-8 and eight versus the 8-3 and three Ballard Bombers. Let's get into the action. In the first quarter, Tyson Shivers was dominant in the post, and the Toradors kept feeding him the ball. After the first quarter, the Toradors were down 10. In the second quarter, the Toradors got a little bit too relaxed on defense, and Ballard was able to go on a large run, making the score at half 32-9. Ballard carried over the momentum from the first half into the second. They kept attacking and making some tough shots on offense. The Toradors were down 47-15 after three. In the fourth quarter, the Toradors were getting good looks, they just weren't able to make them. But for every Doors miss, it seemed like Ballard would score on their end. At the end of the game, the Toradors fell 60-27. to This has been Camden Lehman for Boone TV. See you next time. As always, roll doors. Boone TV Silas Young features the January 27th Boys Wrestling Tournament. On January 27th, the Boone Boys Wrestling Team had their conference meet. This team has been putting in some serious work. This team is a mix of all grade levels, but everyone on the Boone Boys Wrestling team has experience and loads of skill. Let's see how they stand up against their conference. First off is the freshman Mason Ustinik. He is a fast, aggressive wrestler who normally overwhelms his opponent to get a quick pin or finds a way to get points on the board by doing something flashy. Mason starts by getting some quick points with a takedown, and Mason wins his match with a pin. Next up is another freshman named Ashton Peterson. Ashton normally tries to overpower his opponent with his strength, but in this match, it didn't seem to work in his favor. Ashton's opponent was, skilled, was a skilled wrestler, and after a hard-fought match, Ashton lost. The next match is with the sophomore AJ Braddock. AJ went to state his first year here at Boone High, so this match is going to be exciting. AJ starts off being super aggressive. His opponent doesn't even know what to do. AJ is going to have a pretty quick victory. After AJ deals out a couple of slams, his opponent is getting tired, and AJ came out on top with the victory. Tony Heenan is next up for Boone, and the freshman comes up with a quick loss. 
Next up is Ty Silverson, who has gone to state for the past three years of his high school career for Boone. Let's see how he does. Ty starts up. Ty starts off fast, getting some early points on his opponent, but his opponent isn't giving up just yet. Ty and his opponent are going back and forth, scoring on points on each other, but eventually Ty comes out on top. Brody Warwick is the last freshman Boone has on the varsity team. Brody is currently injured, so he does so he isn't performing to his fullest. Brody fights hard, but his opponent finds his weakness and starts using it to his advantage, which makes Brody lose to this match. Joe Postotnik is a junior here at Boone, and let's see how he's gonna do. Joe likes to slam his opponent, so this is gonna be interesting. Joe starts off the match by locking up with his opponent. Joe shoots under his opponent and picks him up. Joe Joe deals out a couple of slams and wins this match. The last match that I filmed was shorter, but it had a lot of action. Sophomore Isaac Furzov started out playing safe, but soon he tried to shoot under his opponent and it all went south from there. Isaac's opponent had his arm the whole round, which made it hard for Isaac to score any points. Isaac ended up losing this match. This meet was packed full of some great matches, and I can't wait to see how they're going to do for the rest of their season. This has been Silas Young with Boone TV. With the latest films, video games, and entertainment, Boone TV's Elliot Baker reviews Undertale Yellow. Take it away, Elliot! What's up, Boone? It's your boy, Elliot Baker, with my review show, The Baker Bungalow. Recently, in December of 2023, a crazy game came out, catching the world by surprise. Undertale Yellow. Undertale Yellow, a game being worked on since 2016, is an action-centered RPG where players must travel through the underground to find their way home, but watch out for monster inhabitants along the way. Undertale Yellow, the action-oriented RPG, is set to happen before the events of Toby Fox's Undertale, where a human named Clover, who you play as, falls into the underground through Mount Ebba. Clover finds themselves in a monster-led kingdom, trying to find out what happened to five children who went missing around there. Most of all, Clover has stumbled into the underground to serve justice. Players will need to travel through different sections of the underground in hopes of finding the lost humans, going through the ruins, Snowden, the dunes, the steamworks, and the general end of game area. Throughout Undertale Yellow, players will be tasked with solving puzzles, a monster tradition, and encountering monsters in battles frequently. The battles are what most of Undertale Yellow is about, so depending on what you decide to do in these battles will change how you experience the game. If you decide to act in an attempt to spare all the monsters you encounter, you will adventure the pacifist route. If you let your dust-hungry urges slip though, and kill any monster, you will find yourself in the neutral route. Last, but certainly not least, if you decide to kill every single monster you can in the underground, you will obtain the Vengeance Route. Each route you can take will provide you with different gameplay, battles, and stories in general, providing at least three interesting playthroughs available to the player to experience. Now, for the cons of Undertale Yellow, we have an unfortunately reoccurring theme of possible disinterest, starting with... Undertale Yellow, on repeated playthroughs or in sections of the game that don't change with the route, can somewhat feel stale to play through, providing less replayability available to players, mainly seen in the main section in the dunes. Exposition is quite prevalent in this game, and as stated in the last con, it can get a little boring at times. Sometimes the characters in Undertale Yellow will just talk and talk to themselves, with little input from the player. Thankfully, the great story more than makes up for this little flaw. Now onto the pros. There's a lot of them. Now, you may have caught on to this already, but for those not in the loop yet, Undertale Yellow is a fan-made prequel to the hit classic Undertale by Toby Fox. That means all of Undertale Yellow actually builds on a pre-existing universe, and it does this exceptionally. One of these examples is heavily seen in the characters in Undertale Yellow are almost fully original, and while seeming to be a slightly bit surface level, they are really enjoyable to interact with throughout the story. Heck, Undertale Yellow only uses about four characters from Toby Fox's Undertale, and whenever they do, they either leave the character as it was, or build on them spectacularly. The music in Undertale Yellow, while admittedly having some uninteresting placeholder tracks, overall has an AMAZING OST! Similar to Toby Fox, Team Yellow uses many iterations of their all-new light motifs to beautifully tell an extremely compelling story through just the music. Also, many of the tracks in Undertale Yellow's OST are absolute bo- Overall, Undertale Yellow is a really fun game to play, if you're a fan of Undertale or not. Sure, the game can enhance the story of Undertale, but it can just as well be consumed as its own piece of media. Oh, and did I mention that it's free? 
That's right, the game as long as Undertale with the same if not more story to dive into is 100% free and available to download on Game Jolt as we speak. Go get it! No! So with all that being said, what would I rate Undertale Yellow? Well, after consideration of the game's somewhat lack of replayability, but amazing music and story, I'd have to give the game a 4.5 out of 5 star rating. The game isn't perfect, but nothing is, and Undertale Yellow is still great despite its flaws. Well, that's my review of Undertale Yellow, and I gotta say, what an amazing game. It builds on Undertale in such an interesting way, and is such a unique experience, it'd really be a disservice if you didn't at least try it out. It's free, so at least you wouldn't be losing anything by experiencing it. Anywho, this has been Elliot Baker with Boon TV, and as always, thanks for watching and roll doors. And thank you all so much for joining me for this week's new show. I will be back next week with all the latest buzz at Boone High School. And in, in the meantime, please head over to BooneTV.com to check out all the latest videos and written stories. And while you're there, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube. And now make sure you stay safe, stay cool, and have a great week, Boone High. Roll doors.